Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. It isn't hard to understand the distress that can sometimes be felt by Christians when they observe the opposition to their message around the world. It's been increasingly hostile uh, over the last few decades. We can see evidence of this in things like the gospel, Uh, when it's spoken to be deemed offensive or attempts to squash church outreach programs, uh, placing all kinds of restrictions on what churches can say and what they can do in the public space. Biblical values are deemed old-fashioned and no longer relevant, even though many of those values form the basis and foundation of our society. But God's people have often encountered opposition. Remember that Jesus himself was falsely arrested, tried and executed. What should we expect as followers of Jesus? There will always be opposition. And this isn't new. I'd like to read a story uh, in the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. The enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were rebuilding a temple to the Lord, the God of Israel. So they approached Zerubbabel and the other leaders and said, Let us build with you, for we worship your God as you do. We have sacrificed to him ever since King Esarhaddon had Assyria brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua and the other leaders of Israel replied, You may have no part in this work. We alone will build the temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, just as King Cyrus of Persia commanded us. Then the local residents tried to discourage and frighten the people of Judah to keep them from their work. They bribed agents to work against them and to frustrate their plans. This went on during the entire reign of King Cyrus of Persia and lasted until King Darius of Persia took the throne. Last week I shared about the enthusiasm that these people felt when God had given them an opportunity to go back and start rebuilding the temple. Everything was new. Uh, There was great exhilaration among the people. Then adversaries popped up. After such a great favour of God, to then deal with these testing times uh, was difficult for them. Because testing times often emerge after great blessing. First, these enemies tried to gain access quietly to become part of the inner crowd, to infiltrate and sabotage the work from within. When that didn't work, they sought to discourage the work, arranging false agents to disrupt supply lines, to interfere with what they needed. They opposed, of course, by later on as we read, seeking to get the governing authorities to work against them, making lies and pointing out all the things they're doing supposedly against the government. Does all that sound a little bit familiar? (laughs) We shouldn't be surprised by opposition. Christians often forget, and we often need reminding, that God has an enemy. And Satan, as God's enemy, is also the enemy of our work. So when the gospel is on the move and Christians are obeying the call of Jesus, there's always going to be opposition from our spiritual enemy. I think we need to open our eyes and realise that this is a spiritual battle going on. The truth is our battle isn't against flesh and blood. It's not against organisations or governments. Our true opposition is the dark world, spiritual forces and demons. If we're going to win spiritual battles, we have to fight with spiritual weapons, which is why we as a church need to take prayer seriously. That we condition our mind also by soaking in the word of God, that we can be alert to the lies and the tricks and the deceptions of the devil that we cling to the truth and trust in Jesus, even though the circumstances around us seem difficult. 
Otherwise, we can so easily be undone by this opposition and give up the good work and just stay quiet. The worst thing we can do in the spreading of the gospel is just to stop speaking it. And it's fear and intimidation that can make us do that. One of the things you need to realize is that Satan has already lost. The kingdom of God is moving and advancing. The gospel is being believed. And all Satan can do, all he can do, is attempt to just disrupt that flow, that advance. You who are followers of Jesus are representatives of this message. The message that there is forgiveness of sins through the cross of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful message that changes lives. Walk in that. Don't be afraid. Don't lose heart. Let's pray. Father, we recognize that your enemy is active, seeking always to disrupt what you want to do. But we believe, Lord, in your promise that you will build the church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. We believe, Lord, that you will have your will done on earth as it is in heaven. We believe in the final judgment, in the resurrection of the saints, in future glory. We believe, Lord, that what you offer is for anyone who would accept it. And so we ask your courage and your strength to not be led astray by opposition, but to step forward, Lord, with the confidence of the gospel to change lives. And as we do that, Lord, the world will change. And so we pray your good favour. We pray your strength and your boldness for your glory and in Jesus' name. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Make sure you're prepared to listen to him as he speaks to you through reading the Bible. If he does speak, make sure you obey. Look for opportunities to bless others and we'll see you soon.